If you work out on a regular basis, then the chances are you're probably no stranger to muscle soreness or the dreaded DOMS. For some, it's a rite of passage, and for others, it's just kind of annoying. Now, I implemented some strategies to reduce my delayed onset muscle soreness and speed up my recovery between workouts. Hi. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty, and I'm a male model physiotherapist and fitness enthusiast. And in this video, I will be sharing with you the strategies that I implement to reduce my muscle soreness and improve my own recovery between workouts. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Recovery from exercise is defined as the time between the end of the last workout and the subsequent return to the resting or recovered state. Now, what you do after your workout can affect how quickly you're able to recover. One thing to bear in mind is that there are supplements out there, or rather people out there, who claim that there are specific supplements that you can take that promise to speed up recovery. Remember that no supplement will ever replace the following three things. Sleep, adequate nutrition, and time. Now let's talk about sleep. Most adults require around seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Teenagers need about eight to 10 hours. Sleep is the most powerful legal performance enhancer. Sleep deprivation, on the other hand, can lead to decreased muscle strength, decreased muscle endurance, delayed muscle recovery, reduced muscle growth, and increased risk of injury. Because overnight, when you're sleeping, that is when muscle synthesis and repair occurs. I now prioritize my sleep. I aim to get seven hours at the very least per night. And if I don't get seven hours, I definitely feel it the next day. The next thing we need to talk about is nutrition. If you're trying to build a house, then in order to build a house, you need the correct bricks, right? You need the correct timber frames, the correct materials to actually start building. Even if you have all the builders, if you don't have the materials, you can't build. The same thing applies with the right foods, with nutrition, because if you don't have the right proteins, the building blocks of amino acids, the building blocks of cells, of organs, of your entire being, then how are you supposed to repair and become stronger? How are you supposed to recover between workouts? Ensuring that your glycogen stores are replenished following a workout is paramount. You want to do this as soon as possible because once your glycogen stores are replenished, the body can focus on protein synthesis, on repairing those muscle fibers that have been damaged during the workout. I would recommend consuming a fast acting carbohydrate combined with an electrolyte to make sure that you're well hydrated. For example, maltodextrin or simply leucozade but not the fizzy leucozade, you want the still leucozade. Alternatively, you might choose to consume a meal that is high in carbohydrates, moderate in protein, and lower in fat. Fat specifically can slow how quickly nutrients is absorbed into cells. I normally drink 500 milliliters of a maltodextrin drink between 15 to 30 minutes after my workout's finished, after I finish stretching and cooling down. It does help to replenish those glycogen stores, or at least to start replenishing those glycogen stores. So what are some other ways of speeding up recovery? Well, as we talked about, there is no substitute for sleep, nutrition, and of course, time. However, there are a few things that I do that I think, or at least scientific evidence has shown, can improve or speed up recovery, as well as decrease delayed onset muscle soreness. If I told you that after workout, you should go and lie down and not actually move, then that would be a terrible bit of advice, both as a physiotherapist and as a fitness enthusiast. But a lot of people think that. A lot of people think that after a workout when they're feeling sore on the next day, they can just sit on the sofa and rest because they think that it's resting. Actually, what you want to do is some gentle activity on your rest days. So for example, if you've done a heavy squat day the day before, you might choose to go for a swim or to cycle on a stationary bike on a, quite a light resistance for around 20 to 30 minutes to get a bit of blood flow to your legs. Some light cardio, going for a walk, going for a little hike, even playing a sport like golf where you're walking around, swinging a club, not doing anything too intense can actually help you recover quicker. Immediately after your workout, you might also choose to do some general movement to help flush that lactic acid out of your muscles or to speed up blood flow to the area. So if you have done a heavy squat day, you might choose to sit on a stationary bike and do around 20 minutes or so of cycling or go on the rowing machine if you've done an upper body day or using the cross trainer. 
This also doubles as a really nice cooldown. And there has been some research to show that a proper cooldown can also improve recovery between workouts. The whole point of movement is to improve blood flow to the muscles without actually putting your body through the intensity of a workout. This improved blood circulation can remove waste products and their metabolites, for example, lactic acid. It can speed up recovery and can reduce delayed onset muscle soreness or the dreaded DOMS as we talked about. Now on my off days, I like to make sure I go for a nice walk twice a day, two half an hour walks. I try and cycle after I've done my leg workout, but also sometimes on my off days. And if I have the option to, I will also go for a swim. Let's talk about self-massage. There has been some research to show that self-massage, i.e. using a foam roller or a massage gun, vibration therapy essentially, can actually reduce delayed onset of muscle soreness. The use of a foam roller has been shown to be effective at increasing range of motion, increasing muscle strength, and reducing muscle stiffness. There's also been some research to show that the use of vibration technology or a massage gun can also reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. I tend to foam roll immediately after I've done any sort of strength training. It's quite hard to foam roll your chest, so I tend to use a massage gun for the smaller areas such as my pecs, my shoulders, sometimes biceps, triceps, and forearms as well. And of course, this video on recovery would not be complete without talking about cryotherapy. You might have seen your favorite athlete having an ice bath or using some sort of cryotherapy device going into that fridge-like thing with their gloves and mittens and it's said or it's thought that cryotherapy improves recovery. Cryotherapy is essentially a treatment that uses the cold to therapeutic effect. There are three main methods or modalities of cryotherapy. The first one being an ice bath, the second one being contrast bathing which is where you go from hot to cold to hot to cold to hot to cold. And the third way being an actual cryotherapy machine which is more high-tech or more fancy. The whole idea is that cold therapy or the cold decreases the inflammation to your muscles following a workout, especially if it's an intense workout. The cold causes your blood vessels to constrict. And in the case of contrast bathing, you then go into a hot water bath and this causes the blood vessels to dilate. And by repeating this a few times, you get a flushing effect. And this flushing effect is key for the removal of post-workout waste products. As a side effect, it can increase the speed of recovery and reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. But research has indicated that ice baths can actually negatively impact muscle protein synthesis. This is because the inflammatory response in your muscles following a workout is essential for muscle synthesis. So here is what I do instead. I normally use contrast showers because one, it saves water, and two, time, because you don't have to wait for the bath to fill out. The best option for myself is to use contrast showers. I'll get into the shower, I'll wash myself, and then I'll do one minute cold, one minute hot, one minute cold, one minute hot, and I'll repeat that at least once, but sometimes two or three times. I tend to have cold showers in the morning or afternoon during the day, especially if I've had a workout in the morning, like my boxing on a Saturday, because it helps to wake me up, make me feel more alert. But in the evening, it's not advised to have cold showers because it can wake you up, which is a good thing during the day. But in the evening, when you're trying to taper things down and try and get to sleep, a hot or warm shower can actually help you feel more sleepy and help your muscles to relax. These are the ways that I increase the speed of recovery between workouts, as well as decrease delayed onset muscle soreness. I hope that you found this video useful and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm on my own, broken I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found